This episode of the In Focus series features John Wayne Ha. Wayne is an Australian Muay Thai fighter and owner and trainer of the Boon Chu Gym on the Gold Coast in Australia. All right, Wayne, thank you for being on the show. So let me take you through this photo. This photo, I don't know if you remember this one, but it yeah. was particularly special for me because as a fight photographer, it was a privilege to see you fight live when i started doing my business you retired already so i thought man there's no way i can see you fight live again but you know as you do one of your many comeback fights <laughs> i yeah. was luckily enough to see you come back to the ring and you were wearing the old rest shorts it's like to be able to see you fight live to sit ringside at the best seats in the house and then photograph you too it was a great moment for me what do you remember from this moment and what's it like coming back from retirement Ooh. Um, oh yeah. Uh, so is this the is Brad Riddell fight? Yep, Brad Riddell. Um, yeah. So I believe I was supposed to fight Cosmo, uh, and then Cosmo didn't get a visa in time. So yep. Brad Riddell took the fight on like a forty out forty eight hour notice sort of fight. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He had to pack his bags, fly to Australia, um, do his medical. Uh, yeah, it was bizarre. It was um, it was it was a really it was a fun fight too. Um, he, he, he stung me in the first round with a couple of heavy punches. And then after that, I had to respect, respect his range. I couldn't let him get into my range. Um, and just playing the game. So just, just this photo is just trying to, uh, uh, make my presence known that, um, it's going to be a, a rough night because, uh, I'm here to, I, I was fit and ready and I uh, wanted to win badly. So yeah, in, in the zone. You were very calm too. What's it like coming back from a retirement? Do you feel it's a lot of pressure? Uh, this, this fight, uh, this fight wasn't just after the retirement, was it? No, no, it was. This, there was a few, uh, this was a few afterwards. Uh, but but when you when coming back from the retirement, yeah, very soul satisfying. It, it was it was meant to be. Uh, I just feel happy when I'm when I'm fighting. It, it just feels like I'm I'm uh, very yeah. What I was put on this earth to do. Um, yeah, it, it's it's crazy feeling when as soon as the first bell rings, uh, until the final bell, you just in this different um, zone. You're no longer uh, a part of the normal, regular universe. You're you're uh, living on on pure adrenaline. Yeah. Um, so everything's a muscle memory. So you got to have time to think of how you're going to counter, or how you're going to react when someone throws a punch or a kick. Um, how you're going to block and defend and, and counter, and everything's just you. It's it's sort of like you you take a step back and just let everything just happen in front of you, and then when you hear the final bell. It's like everything comes back into into consciousness again. And it's and almost you can like hear the you... crowd and you see people and you see your <laughs> corner men again. And it's like, whoa, where have I been for the last twenty five minutes? Just like, I that's saw why it's so on hard your to I saw on your Instagram you're playing the K one Max game again. So it's almost like you're playing yourself in a video game. Ah, yes, yes, for sure. <laughs> but yeah, definitely a different different. Uh, yeah, you can't get that just mowing the lawn and doing the dishes. You have to be. When your life's on, on the edge and you, everyone relies on you being conscious or not in the next couple of seconds, or relies on that, that moment. So, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a very nice place to be. I love it. Oh, mate, you look so calm as well. Yeah. It's all, it's all of us hard. It's all poker face. <laughs> now, normally when I'm shooting, I'm always ringside. I'm always trying to get that nice low angle. Very often do I stand on the uh, canvas and get an uh, aerial shot. In this case, yeah. this was the main event. And the anthem was being played, and it's just nice to see the sea of people standing in awe, watching you fights. Sometimes I just like to look in the crowd to see who's ringside next to you. Uh, we see our good friend Sai Naji. Um, what's it like in this moment before the fight? Are you able to zone out? Do you hear people behind you? Does that bring you some sort of energy? Mm, yeah, you're in the zone, and the fire is burning in the belly, but you have to try and look calm. Uh, you don't want people to know what you're feeling. Um, yeah, it's all. Yeah, like I said before, it's all about the poker face. Um, yep. Calm, but but serious um, at the same time. Focus. Hmm. Yeah. So uh, controlled aggression. Everything's on just uh, building, 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 waiting for that bell to ring. So yeah. So uh, again, that's one of those like, positions where um, all eyes are on you. You're, yep. you're there for that moment just to have uh, everyone's attention. And, uh, the anticipation of that first bell ringing is it's quite a uh, addictive feeling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I tell all my friends, I've only had a handful of fights, but whenever I'm in a ring, you see my hands before the fight starts, it's always on the ropes. Otherwise, I'd be trembling. Ooh. So it's something to hold on yeah. to for myself. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, um, yeah, it's crazy. 
And then there's uh, Mr. Dombuk uh, in the front there with the grey hair. Yes, yes. He's always ringside. Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah, he's always a big supporter of the Muay Thai. And, um, he actually helped uh, provide the, the um, footage for uh, the Zambini fight. Okay. Yeah, yes. Bless with Venom. Uh, no, no, sorry, sorry. I, I, I was fighting Zambini's and then uh, Mr. Uh, Graham Burke was there. Sorry, not Tom Burke. Graham Burke. <laughs> Graham Burke was there. And then um, uh, he's he seen um, Guy, uh, Guy Norris was the producer and Jim Richards was down there and then um, everyone met and then they, they all knew each other and said, oh, what are you guys doing down here? I'm actually filming a documentary on, um, on John Wayne. Um, yeah, we, we've all finished. It's in the editing suite. It's almost finished. We're almost done. And then, um, and then Mr. Graham Burke said, oh, I'd love to have a look at it if there's any chance, if, uh, if there's a, um, yeah, have a quick preview. So, end up having the fight with Zambides, we're knocking him out in the first round. So, they go back to the editing suite, add, add that to the final cut, and they send that uh, rough draft to Mr. Graham Burke, and then he had looks at it, and he said, oh, this is amazing. Um, is there any chance you want me to put this in cinemas for you for a few days? Um, even if I put it in for one or two days, at least you can say that it's had a, a cinema release. So, uh, so sure enough, uh, um, we had this the movie premiere at Pacific Fair up here on the Gold Coast. Um, at first, it was going to go in the in the tiny room, um, just to get it out of the way. Yeah. And then it sold out. Then they moved it to the middle room, and it sold out. And they moved it to the biggest room at the Pack Fair. Uh, so we on the opening night, we had uh, 450 people. Um, wow. Uh, with a big red carpet, uh, we set up all the banners for the Bus for Venom movie, and then uh, I, I was taking photos and. Um, signing things for everybody as, as they made their way in. And then I remember uh, everyone's already in the cinema by this stage and uh, I went in the cinema last and I remember walking around the corner the next minute I got a standing ovation um, <laughs> before the movie even started and I'm just sitting there just uh, just, just mind blowing. It's like, this can't be happening. How does that compare then, uh, to having, been having your hand raised during a fight? Yeah, it was completely, completely different. Just so special, so humbling, so such a pinch yourself moment that I can't believe I'm going to almost watch a documentary yeah. and then um, found, found my seat and then the, the documentary started and to see your head um, like three, four, five meters high. And it's like, holy crap, this is insane. And then, and then after a couple of minutes, I had to get rid of uh, over the, the anxiety of seeing yourself for the first time on the big screen. Yep. And then you just fall into the, um, into the film and the, the rest takes over and, and, and then the soundtrack's so deep and you feel, you feel the, the, the energy through the speakers, through your body. It's, um, it's one of those moments that I'll never forget. I, I remember I, I, uh, I flew my mum and I flew my nana and we hired a stretch limousine to go there just to, just to do it in style, just to have those memories to say, oh, yeah, this, yeah, how many times you get to go to the cinema to watch your premiere of your documentary? Yeah, it's man. Those ones where it's like, I can't, uh, I can't not let this slip through my fingers. I've got to do it 100%. Even went and bought a new suit. Uh, <laughs> went to the tailors and um, just to, just to, uh, yeah, really capture the moment. So yeah, one of those. Not many Muay Thai guys can say true. they've been to their and, own. And, and it's all too. and it's all thanks to Mr. Graham Burke there. If it wasn't for him, that I wouldn't have got that opportunity. It would have been just another documentary that ends up on YouTube. But because of his help, um, he allowed me to 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 be a superstar for a couple of days, which was really really um, amazing. That's amazing, Wayne. Very lucky. Now, being such Ooh. a prolific fighter yourself there's a lot of people that look up to you uh new fighters even experienced fighters what's it like being on the corner stool yourself getting advice during a fight uh yeah uh so so what happened uh i had uh i moved to thailand 1996 and then i uh got stayed in the camp and then got treated like the one of the thai boys yeah and then when i moved back to australia end of uh 99 i, I pretty much I haven't had a trainer for the last 20 years. I, I train myself. Um, I watch all my opponents' uh, videos and make my own game plans. Uh, I push myself to train, uh, give myself uh, uh, strategies and uh, uh, how I'm going to prepare for my 10-week uh, lead-up to my camps. I'll, I'll get my pad holders to come over. Uh, if I get Kevin or I'll get anyone to hold pads for me, um, I'll show them how the, the pads held, how I want them to attack me uh, and how to become my opponent. And then, um, yeah, I do all my own matchmaking, uh, yeah. uh, 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 game plans. Uh, do all my, so you're all the my fighter fighters, and then the manager as well. I'm also, also the manager of all my <laughs> other fighters as well. So it's quite, it's quite pretty. Um, but um, so I got told by one of my boxing trainers, 
he said, uh, it's all about uh, maintaining a slow, steady heart rate. So in between rounds, so uh, when you hear ding for the end of the round, you have 60 seconds to recover. Yep. So while you're walking back to the corner, start breathing straight away. And not just panting, um, big breaths. As big as you can, hold for two or three seconds, uh, slow release, big breathe in again. And then you want to uh, take advantage of every single second during that six second break to recover. So hopefully um, by 30 seconds into the round, you've, you've got your, your breath back, your heart slowed down, and then you can concentrate on what your trainer is saying to you so it sinks in more. So it doesn't just go in one ear and out the other. So you're going to rely on your cornerman to be your eyes. What They can see what you can't while you're um, competing. Yep. So yeah, take as much um, take as much in as you can and, and try and to do what they say. And, and then it, it all depends what it is as well. Um, I remember one of the boys, it was the fifth round of one of my fights. He goes, all right, this round, um, last round, just go out there and just throw double kicks. I was like, mate, it's the fifth <laughs> round. I'm rather yeah. tired. I don't think I've been throwing any double kicks at all. But um, thanks for the encouragement. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's like, yeah, it's the last thing you want to hear when you're completely exhausted. Just throw doubles. Yeah, yeah. Nah, that ain't happening. <laughs> yeah, I followed uh, you many years before I started training myself. And I remember you training with Dip when he was up in Queensland, but obviously he's moved down now. What's it like to be cornered by Dip when you're fighting in Melbourne? Is this connection still the same? Oh, for sure. Um, yeah, Dip, Dip sure, very cool. Um, he's just got that uh, genuine Thai style. Uh, I can do my freestyle with him. He, he can um, he has his game plans as well that I can feed up. He can also see things that I can't see while I'm, while I'm competing. And just having that trust in someone that, that's at a high level yes. that, 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 that we can bounce off each other. So knowing that we're on the same, same wavelength. Uh, yeah, and, and he knows how, to, how the, the system works as well to, to score. So if I can't knock him out, at least I can get enough runs on the board. But when it's time to, to the decision to get my hand raised, so so yeah, just just having that guy knowing that's that's been there more than more than once or twice. <laughs> yeah, and he's still very fit too. Eh? Yeah, yeah, and he's and he's just one of the boys, just nice and humble. Yeah, there's no ego. Everything's just um, just really cruisy. Uh, he's always good for a laugh when I see him. <laughs> How I like it. I don't I don't like a serious corner. I like to just um, just chill and relax and just. Uh, yeah, have have a good time. Enjoy the moment. Words of wisdom, hey. Mm. So back to your mm. fight with Brad Riddell. Obviously, he's moved on to the UFC now and doing some crazy yes. things. Yep. This was a fight. Well, you guys both took it on last minute. What did you guys say yes. to each other after the fight? And man, it was a crazy five-round fight back and forth. I overshot my quota for this one because I didn't know what was going to happen. It was just action-packed from the first round hey. to the fifth round. What did you guys say to each other after the fight? Yeah, so we went had a went to the after party. We caught up. Uh, it was it was it was funny. Um, so Brad, he goes, oh, so the only reason I took this fight is to hopefully get a photo with you after the fight, so <laughs> I can say that I fought you. And it's like, oh no, holy crap, that's amazing. That's so cool. Nothing but respect for Brad. Um, he he was he was tough. Um, we went for five rounds, and then we rematched on CMT. Uh, he beat me on CMT. Uh, yep. uh, he knocked me down. I think. Four times, I think twice in the first, again in the second, again in the third. I come back fourth and fifth, but uh, he'd already scored so many points with knockdowns that um, I needed to knock out the win. Because uh, the first round, he rocked in the first round, and I knew he had a good hand, so I tried to stay long for the rest of the fight. And then when I rematched him on CMT, uh, in the MMA gloves, uh, I, I just, uh, yeah, I forgot how hard that he punched. And then with those hands, they're so unforgiving, the MMA gloves, that uh, the first 30 seconds, he caught me halfway through a left switch. And then uh, from that moment on, every time he tagged me, I just lose control of my body and just um, collapse. Um, it was the most, most bizarre feeling, having uh, no control over your lower limbs. Um, <laughs> and then I remember everyone was really foggy, really foggy, really foggy. And then the start of the fourth, um, all of a sudden, it felt like someone lifted, unlifted a veil and everything was um, crystal clear again. Yep. And I thought, I'm, so, I'm back, I'm back, I've got this. And then um, I remember going hard all fifth, and going hard all fifth, uh, uh, fourth and fifth. But um, uh, I just put it, I, I remember cutting him with a, a right punch under his cheek, which was um, uh, gave me a bit more motivation again. But yeah, I just couldn't land the, the big one to put him down. But yeah, uh, yeah, he's a great fighter. It's so good to see him doing so well in UFC as well. Um, to to live the dream and to get on the big show. That's uh, that's awesome. Yeah. And, and I think he's got a couple of um, fight of the nights as well. So so financially, he's doing doing really well too. Back to your first fight. What's it like preparing for a fighter who 
just took the fight last minute. How much uh, of a game plan is that being changed? Yeah, uh, so sometimes you don't get the opportunity to, to study your opponents that much. Uh, and then when you train for, let's say, a kicker and then you're fighting a puncher on, on 24 hours notice, uh, yeah, you just got to learn on the job. Yeah. Uh, first round, be cautious and then just rely on your own skill set from that moment forward From um, um, to see how strong they are, see how fast they are, uh, uh, yeah, see what sort of attacks they're going to do, see how much pressure they're going to apply and see how much they like pressure too. Sometimes when you put it on, uh, people turn, people fold. But no, Brad was tough. He was there for the whole five rounds. Uh, oh, he's a Kiwi. He'll bang. Yeah, and I couldn't afford to to lose concentration for one second. Otherwise, he would have tagged me hard. So that no, was a good fight. It was very exciting. Um, it was yeah, great I, to I watch. I enjoyed that one a lot. And I got to throw, throw a couple of back kicks in there as well, just to, uh, <laughs> just, just to seal the deal, to make, yep. make it look sexy. Yeah. That was awesome seeing that, man. Now... I love getting backstage photos almost as much as getting those knockout photos in the ring, but it's hard, you know, working by yourself, running back and forth from the ring to backstage. So normally when I'm working at a show, before the show starts, I like to map out my way, the fastest way for me to get from my seat to the backstage and then back and forth again. This particular fight was the main event between yourself and Toby Smith. And I don't know if it was just me, but I felt there was a very tense vibe backstage with everyone. It was such a big moment. Everyone wanted to be part of the event. Um, so I just had to be part of the event and see you guys from backstage and also in a center ring. What was it like in a change room at that particular fight? It seemed like you had a private room too. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just, whatever they give me on the night, I have no idea what's happening. Um, yeah, they said, oh, this is where you're going to get changed. So, uh, yeah, it was tough. It was, um, it was one of those fights. I knew Toby was really, really good. And I knew he was young and knew he was hungry. I knew it was going to be a very hard fight. He's done his hit apprenticeship in Thailand as well. Uh, the first round, I thought I was doing okay. I, I, it was tough and exhausting at the same time. Uh, I thought I was doing okay. And then, yeah, when he, when he hit me with the elbow in the second round, it felt like someone had stuck a hot chisel through my cheek. Um, I remember going down, uh, clutching at my face. And the referee started counting. And I remember looking up at the referee saying, oh, don't worry about counting. I'm done. Yeah. Uh, something's broken. Something's not right. And then uh, I, I was like, I wanted to leave the ring straight away and get uh, uh, attended to to find out what happened. But at the same time, I didn't want to disrespect Toby either. So I stayed there until I raised my hand. I raised, raised Toby's hand and then um, quickly made an exit to the, to the change room to, uh, to find out what, what had gone on and why I was in so much pain. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I've got a doctor friend that looks after me. Uh, so he had his medical kit with him. Uh, he gave me a shot of morphine. And then a couple of minutes later, he goes, oh, how are you feeling? So I'll tell you the truth, I, I don't feel nothing. So he gave me another shot. And then um, same deal again, about five minutes later, asked me how I was doing. I was like, oh, uh, it's still 11 out of 10. It's still like, excruciating. So um, we jumped in the car, went to the hospital. And then I ended up getting, um, staying staying four nights at uh, the Melbourne hospital there. Uh, they were umming and erring whether they're going to operate or not to see if uh, my my retina had detached or if the the wall of my eye socket had collapsed. So um, it was it was one of those touch and goes. And luckily, um, by the end of it, they they didn't operate. They let it heal by itself. Uh, but it was very very scary, especially when um, everyone's gone home. You by yourself. Yeah. Um, nurses and doctors are coming in constantly for the four days, and um, we're going to operate. We're going to operate. Oh, we're not going to operate. We're going to operate. We're not going to operate. That, that was my life for the four days. And I said, oh, what's going on? If you're going to do it, do it. If you're not, don't worry about it. Uh, and then the worst part was uh, I wasn't allowed to fly. They said, oh, because there's so much cabin pressure and with a broken eye socket, it'll be excruciating. So we, we suggest um, you have to drive home. It's like, oh, no. So uh, It's I, like a road trip from Melbourne mom, back to Gold Coast. Yeah, so... So mum, mum drove me the 24 hours home and then I, I, I put her on a plane to go home. But um, yeah, it was so lucky. You've got a, a loving mum that uh, takes the time out and look after a, a busted headed son. <laughs> <laughs> That's very sweet to hear. Yeah. Now, I'd love you to talk about your famous gunslinging Y crew. Yes. For the fight fans who know you, they expect it. Even for the casual fans or people who are at the show for the first time, seeing that yeah. it's such a nice experience and it's it's almost like yeah. an icebreaker. Uh, yeah, so the first time I did this was uh, at Lumpini in 1997. Uh, I was fighting on Thai TV and then 
my little buddy, the, um, the, the owner of the camp's son, he said, oh, we should think up, some, we should try and come up with some, something cool, something cowboy. Um, should, we, should we do a lasso? Should we do this? Should we do that? Uh, what about we, we shoot the gun? What about uh, we'll, we'll pretend to throw, we'll pretend to do two arrows and for the third arrow, we'll throw the bow and arrow away and we'll pull out two six shooters and we'll, and we'll, and we'll do that. And then uh, we'll blow the smoke and then twirl around <laughs> the fingers and put them back in the holsters. Yeah, that'll look cool. So, and then um, I remember the first time doing it at Lumpini, uh, getting, getting a standing ovation at the end. Um, the tires were the tires were like this is amazing this is so cool and then uh, and then I did it again against uh, Orono and uh, yeah all the all the tires were, were cheering almost expecting it um, it was um, yeah super cool and I think that's what helped me get famous in Thailand really fast yeah it's just being uh, different um, uh, stepping outside of the of the box and, and just um, being unique something that no one has ever done before and then uh, that's what uh, got a lot of eyes on me straight away. And plus there wasn't many Westerners back then either. But because I was doing that Thai style, not disrespecting the sport, not disrespecting the Thais, but at the same time, um, taking their culture and, yeah. and giving it a slight tweak, a Western tweak with the yeah. guns. So yeah, it was, um, it was very rewarding to be um, accepted as a, an innovator. Yeah, I can see that. And it's also nice. That's why I love Muay Thai. It's, a serious sport, tense sport, but it does have its moments of respect and also a bit of fun, like over here, like Toby seems to be loving it too. Yeah, sure. Um, so back in the day, I used to do two guns and I'd pull yeah. them out and I'd shoot, 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 shoot. I'd blow out the smoke and then I'd put them back in. And then uh, after a few more fights, uh, instead, of, instead of that, I'd creep up, creep up. And then I'd put my, my glove on their forehead and then it'd be a, a, a case of one shot, one kill. And I found that I found that I was um, saving money on uh, ammunition. That, that was quite funny. That was, uh, that, that was oh. well, we, we call that fire. Yeah. I'll, add, I'll add a laugh track to it afterwards. <laughs> come on, man. Come on, man. That was good. Yeah, so instead of doing six shots, 12 shots, it's just one shot now. Boom. I'm a professional hitman. <laughs> this moment here. Oh, that's the pain. That's the pain seat. I was lucky to be in the right spot at the right time when it happened. Not many people knew what landed. All that they knew was, you know, you were hurt. I was right there uh, next to you. I, I knew. was going to say I was, in, I was in the wrong spot at the wrong time. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, there was... Completely. I don't know if you remember, there was so much going on. Everyone was cheering on Toby's side. Blair jumped into the ring. Um, the referee kept staring at you, seeing if you're okay. Um, and I think your corner slowly made their way towards you just to check up on you. But yeah, how yeah. much do you remember from this moment here? Oh, I just remember my, my face just felt like it was um, caved in um, and just excruciating, just the pain was in, out of control. Uh, before that, uh, Orono was my most painful fight. Yep. Um, uh, he split me through my eyelid, uh, giving me 13 stitches uh, through my eyelid and another eight stitches under my eye. Um, and there must be a nerve ending that goes through your eyebrow and he must have cut through it because I, I just meant the just uh, pure just pain but when I when Toby hit me my he broke my eye socket in two places he broke my eye socket uh, in front of my eye socket on, on the cheek and he also broke the the, the bone um, the, the, the the wall that runs alongside the nose that, that got um, cracked as well yep. so um, yeah two spots and then uh, must, uh, some of the, the eye muscle must have um, uh, been, every time I tried to turn my eye the, the muscle would scrape the eye socket or the bone Shit. where the bone had broken and just feel it scratch every time I tried to look left or right um, and it was so much pain it hurt so bad and what then, was um, the they gave me so much they gave me so much morphine between um, Dr. Phil giving me morphine in the, at the venue and then when I got to the hospital um, they gave me five mil, then another three mil, then another two mil. And then I just got to the stage where it was, uh, they could have put out an elephant. There was <laughs> and something or other. Um, yeah. And then the lady goes, oh, look, I'm just going to give you another, like, just five to get this over and done with. And she yeah. did five. Out of, out of, I think I had like, I don't know, maybe 16, 18 mil by that stage. And it's like, oh, yep. I see what my morphine does now. I understand what the whole is about. I, I get it. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and then and then um, 
And then I remember feeling just sick, just putrid, just having this um, evil thing in your veins, just making you feel horrid. It was um, more things not as, as crashed. It's not as a is uh, pleasant as people make it out to be. It's uh, quite disgusting, really. Well, they talk about yeah, the highs, but they don't really go about what happens afterwards. Yeah, because I remember they gave me a, a, an injection before they gave me the morphine saying, this is an anti-nausea an injection. Um, you'll understand in a minute. So when they gave me the morphine for the first, like, 10 minutes, I was like, ah, oh, woo. And, and, then, and then the seediness comes. I was like, oh, this is gross. <laughs> this is, um, yeah, get this out of my system now. So, and then... Um, yeah, I remember, yeah, just the, the anxiety of being in the hospital, just not knowing what was going to happen over those, those four days. It was, it was um, yeah, very, yeah, very, very weird place. Yeah, yeah. and they, uh, I remember I went to the hospital and they, they didn't wash the face off because they were scared my face had been um, crushed. Yeah. So if they had a white blood, they could have done more damage. So those let the, the dry blood sit on your face for... I, I, until I get the MRI results back, which is like uh, 12, 10 hours later. Um, and every time someone walks past, you look like you've just been in a car accident. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it was pretty, pretty, pretty crazy. It was a crazy time. Well, it's good to see you back to normal now, mate. Yeah. And even to this day, I think that was what, four or five years ago, that fight. And um, I still have nerve damage in my face now where... Uh, uh, if I touch the, the left side of my cheek, it feels like a, an electric spider web. My whole my whole face lights up um, oh. if I touch a certain certain pace. You know, or if I have a cold drink, um, I feel it like light up as well. It's, um, yeah, it's quite quite weird. But um, yeah, all worth it. all good. It's a freak accident too, hey? Yeah. Your boy Ooh. Ben Marty. Mr. Ben. As you can see yes. in the photo, his his glove has been taped up. He's about to head to the ring. What kind of last minute advice do you give your fighter in a moment like this? You know, all the work's been done. Just, just waiting for them to be caught out now. Yeah. Um, just uh, building up their confidence and making sure that they, they believe in themselves, believe in their own ability. And, uh, go out there and, 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 and shine. This is your opportunity to go out there and make a name for yourself. Yep. Uh, all eyes are on you for that 15, 20 minutes. So go out there and have fun. Um, you, you, and then we know you've done all the work, you're, you're fit, you're strong, you're everything else. So uh, it, it all relies from this moment forward. It's up to you how bad you want it. You, you got to, yeah, the dreams are going to chase itself. You got to go out there and work hard and uh, go and earn it. What's it like switching from the fighter mentality to the trainer mentality? Is it separate or does it mix and match? Uh, I know it's, um, I'm very lucky to have so many fights. So I, I've been there and understand where they are. Uh, understand the, the adrenaline and everything and the, the excitement and the, the nervousness and everything that goes that they're, they're going through at that moment as well. So uh, I can definitely relate and then just uh, help talk them through it and help them, um, yeah, like I said, uh, just go over game plans, just keep reminding them what we're there to do. Confidence, just make them believe um, no matter what happens that, that uh, it's their night. Yeah, no, no, Nothing's going to stand in the way from them achieving what they want to achieve if they want it bad enough. Well said, mate. In this one here, uh, Jun got dropped with, I think, a body shot, was it? Oh, it might be, yes. Yeah. What's it like for you in the corner right now when your fighter's been dropped? What do you say to them? What's going through your mind? Uh, just uh, panic. Just like the one, one you don't want to see your um, fighter lose, but at the same time, you don't want to see your fighter hurt either. Yeah. Um, especially if it's a serious injury where they have, might have to get uh, medical attention after the fight. Uh, if, it's a, if it's a quick knockdown and they're fine, yeah, it's no worries. It sucks, but at the same time, at least they're safe. But when you see someone get like very hurt and then you know you're going to be spending the rest of the night in the ER, it's, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's when... I suppose you being there yourself, you wouldn't want that on your fighters either. Oh, for sure. And then if the girlfriend's there or someone else is there and they're all going to spend the night in the hospital, it's, um, it's very taxing. No yeah. one wants to spend the night in the hospital. Everyone, everyone just wants to go home, have a good time, go out, have a couple of quiet drinks. No one wants to... No one thinks about the bad parts that no. come with the fighting also. 
And then, uh, especially June, but I think this is before June become a, uh, an Australian resident. So, so everything's triple going to the hospital um, but without Medicare. It's uh, very scary. No one is going to be 600, 800 bucks for just x-rays, let alone before seeing that. The, it's crazy. Uh, seeing the doctor. Yeah. It's just like, oh, do I get the x-ray or do I spend all the money? So I said, oh, geez. Yeah, it's a tough one to be in. How do you, what do you say to a fighter after they've lost in a way like this? How do you comfort them? Oh, I just, just what I understand is um, it's a game of centimeters. Um, yeah, sometimes you just get got. There's nothing you can do about it. Mm. Uh, you, you can be the best rider in the world, but eventually you're going to get hit. Uh, sometimes it's, it's a glancing shot. Sometimes it's a beauty. So, yeah, you got to take the good with the bad. The highs with the lows. The highs are awesome, but the lows are a reminder why the highs are so good. <laughs> <laughs> well said. Do you remember this day here? Oh, that hammers. Okay. Yeah. Hammers grand opening and man, every room you walk into, you're a superstar amongst all the fight uh, fans. Everyone wants that Wayne uh, Park photo, and man, you don't. I never seen you refuse a photo with anyone. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I remember uh, when I was a, uh, a kid. I must have been. No, I just got back from Thailand. Sorry, this was 1996. Uh, I was supposed to fight at Festival Hall, and then I ended up breaking my rib a week before the fight, and then um, uh, my fight got cancelled. Uh, I was lucky to get some ringside seats with uh, my, my, my Thai trainer that I bought from Thailand to, to um, be in my corner. And then uh, I, I remember seeing Ian Jacobs in a suit walking past all, all, of, all the seats. And, I, and I've jumped up the wave to him. Mm. And um, I, was, I was so excited. And he, he looked at me. And then he just kept walking like I was just a ghost. And it's like, oh, no. I can't believe I just got um, snobbed. Just yeah, just uh, cold shouldered. That sucks, eh, man? And then everyone's looking at me, standing up, waving like a freak. And, um, yeah, and it's like, oh no. And, uh, and from that moment forward, I said, I never want to be that guy. I never want to make anyone feel like I just felt that that spot. So when anyone that wants to come up for a photo or a handshake or even just a five minute chat, I'm gonna make sure I get on my way and make sure. And then and that person might tell 10 people that, um, yeah. oh, what a good bloke. I met him the other day. Or, or then you had the, uh, the reverse psychology where if you are that guy, then they tell 50 people that you're a dickhead. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> I'd, I'd rather people say, oh, yeah, what a nice guy than, um, than the other way. So, uh, and then, yeah, it's so cool. And then I've had one guy send me a, po- a photo recently where I, I might have met his son. I took a photo when, he, when his son was 10. Now his son's like 17, 18, a proper teenager kicking the bag, still living the Muay Thai dream, still, yeah. still doing it, still doing giant, uh, jumping, flying knees on his, and then, um, yeah, you, you helped create this young man's um, uh, dream. So, so yeah, and when, when, when you hear stuff like that, it's, it's very rewarding. Oh, definitely. To, to make all the, the pain and the sacrifice worth it, that you can inspire other people to want to live your lifestyle. Man, I don't know how you respond to every comment on Instagram, every post on Facebook. Yeah. You're very active. I think because I, Try and have a laugh and a giggle. I think everyone respects the the fact, um, and and maybe because I'm not full of shit either. Yeah. If I can, if I can say oh, I'm a good fighter, I've got plenty of footage to prove that I am too. So uh, and then not taking myself too seriously. I think everyone just uh, really enjoys enjoys having having a giggle and having a laugh and just having a joke. Uh, yeah, sure, fighting is brutal, but at the same time, if you can make a joke out of it, have a have fun. Uh, yeah, people people feed off it too. Yeah, I see that, man. I mean, there's always... And then, um, yeah, also, I, I, I haven't worked a job since 1996. So I'm a professional social media surfer. I've got all the time in the world. I thought you know, all the time. Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like a community service, just uh, scrolling through my social media and liking comments all day. Yeah. Now, last photo. What do you think it's going to be? Ooh, no idea. Something happy. Something Please happy. tell me what's going on here, man. Oh, Benny. <laughs> um, that's a good one. I have no idea. That's a good question. Uh, I don't know. That's a good... Hey, no idea. I wish I could. Yeah. I wish I had an answer. It's a funny one because I saw it. I'm thinking <laughs> that, could be a, that could be good for a caption contest. Yeah. Poor Benny. 
he's heard them all. He, he's heard them multiple times too. So he's probably he's probably one of those. You got this, mate. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, man. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. It's a pleasure having you on. Yeah, no worries. Sorry for all my technical difficulties on my end. Um, and one day I'll learn how to do this properly. Yeah. It's all good. Thank you. Awesome, mate. Thanks for the opportunity to have a chat. That was cool.